Good day, everyone, and welcome. This is Ray Ford with FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, Small Business and Industry Assistance Program, also known as CWSBIA. Thank you for joining us today for our presentation on the proposed rule, revising the National Drug Code format and drug label barcode requirements. This rule is intended to minimize the impact of running out of the 10-digit National Drug Codes by adopting a single, uniform, 12-digit format for FDA-assigned NDCs. For your convenience, we've included QR codes to access SBIA on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Scan the QR code with the camera on your cell phone. This will provide you with a link to SBIA on the platform for the QR code that you scanned. Just to remind you of our upcoming events on November the 30th, we do have our Drug Master File Workshop, Gadoo for 3, Enhancements and Structured Data Submissions. On December the 7th and the 8th, we're offering our FDA Clinical Investigator Training course. And on December the 14th, we have a webinar on what to expect after inspection, 43s, responses, and beyond. The webinar in its entirety will run approximately one hour. Our speaker for today's webinar is Dr. Leila Raju Esfandiri, PharmD, Lead Consumer Safety Officer, Drug Registration and Listing Branch, Division of Labeling, Registration, and Unapproved Drugs, Office of Unapproved Drugs and Labeling Compliance, Office of Compliance, CEDAR. Please join me in welcoming our presenter for today's webinar, Dr. Raju Esfandiri. Thank you, Ray, for that introduction, and welcome to FDA's presentation on draft rule titled Revising the National Drug Code Format and Drug Label Barcode Requirements, which was published on July 25, 2022. In this presentation, I will discuss the National Drug Code Format um, starting with a general overview of the NDC and then go through the main points in the proposed rule and its timeline. NDC is an identifier unique to each drug that is assigned to drugs in US commercial distribution. But NDC is not just a number that identifies a specific drug. It is also smart code and it's included on most drugs labeling. We will dive into what each segment means and why we need to propose a change later in the presentation. The three segments of NDC represent a specific aspect of the drug it is assigned to. The first segment is the labeler code and represents the drug manufacturer or distributor. The second segment is the product code. This code identifies the drug formulation, and it must be different for different formulations and physical characteristics, such as active ingredients, strength of active ingredients, color, shape, and other physical characteristics. The third segment represents the package code, which identifies the package size and type. NDC is currently 10 digits and exists in three different formats. The 442 format was the original NDC format. Soon after, FDA realized that four-digit labeler codes will run out quickly. The 532 and 541 formats were created to maintain a 10-digit NDC, which was the maximum number of digits that could be encoded in a linear barcode. Essentially, the product code or package code had to lose a digit to accommodate for a five-digit labeler code after four-digit labeler codes were exhausted. Under the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, NDC for the first time was included in a regulation as an 11-digit format. This format, which is formulated by adding a leading zero to the short segment of, of FDA's three NDC formats, creates a 542 format. This format has been used prior to HIPAA by the payer industry to maintain a con one configuration NDC. The HIPAA 11 digit format for the NDC 
is widely used by industry, especially in billing, and for Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services for their drug rebate program. The 11-digit HIPAA-converted NDC adds a leading zero to the short segment of an NDC. In the case of Format 1, it is in the Package section. In the Format 2, it is the Product section. And in Format 3, the leading zero is in the Labeler Code part. In some systems, the hyphens are eliminated and NDCs are stored and used as a string of digits. Currently, pharmacists, uh, pharmacies, hospitals, payers, as well as numerous other healthcare entities have the extra burden of back and forth conversion of FDA's official 10-digit NDC format to HIPAA's 11-digit format. So what happens when we run out of five-digit labeler codes? NDC is codified and defined in 21 Code of Federal Regulation, Section 20733. Under the current regulation, once FDA runs out of five-digit labeler codes, it will start assigning six-digit labeler codes. This will lead to two new formats and a new 11-digit FDA NDC that has the potential to cause confusion with the 11-digit HIPAA-converted NDC. Why issue a proposed rule and why issue it now? The new 11-digit NDC has the potential to duplicate HIPAA-converted NDCs. Issuing the rule now would minimize the confusion and potential safety concerns. We have probably 10 plus years left before we run out of five digit labeler codes. We cannot be very accurate about this timeline because unpredictable events such as national public health emergencies can affect it. This uncertainty on itself can increase impact. And so by having a clear plan and timeline, we can try to minimize that impact. Here's an example of a duplication error of a HIPAA-converted 11-digit NDC and a new FDA-assigned 11-digit NDC. As you can imagine, different drug products with the same unhyphenated NDC that are stored in some health systems have the potential for serious safety and medication errors. Who uses NDCs and would it be impacted by any changes to the NDC? The short answer is pretty much everyone who is involved with healthcare. It covers not just human drugs, but also animal drugs and biologics, and involves all sectors in drug manufacturing, supply chain, prescribing, dispensing, administering, reimbursement, and so on. It also is not limited to private sector. It covers many government entities at the federal and state level that use the NDC for various programs and initiatives. Through the draft rule, FDA is proposing a new length and single format for the NDC. If finalized, the rule will change the NDC length to 12 digits and create one single format, the 642. As you can see here, the new format is created by adding leading zeros to the short segments, a similar concept currently used by some stakeholders to convert the FDA 10-digit NDC to HIPAA 11-digit NDC. We are also proposing to amend the linear barcode requirement to allow industry more flexibility. It will allow linear or nonlinear barcodes on drug product labeling to give industry the flexibility in encoding the NDC in, in scanning technology. Currently, the UPC code can only encode 10 digits. That's the main reasoning behind keeping the NDC 10 digits when we ran out of four digit labeler codes. With new data metrics 2D barcode technology, 
A 12-digit NDC can be encoded within these barcodes along with numerous other information like lot numbers, GTIN, and etc. Without a specified date or timeline where everyone converts at the same time, varying adoption rates and systems capabilities has the potential for breakdowns on various levels in the healthcare system. The idea is that if, through this rule, a single format of the NDC is adopted by all, we can eventually eliminate the need to maintain and convert different NDC formats and lengths, which can be beneficial in reducing medication error and confusion, and to improve safety in the long run. If finalized, the proposed rule will provide a set date for all stakeholders to be prepared to start transitioning into the 12-digit format. So currently, we are at the comment period after publication of the draft rule. After the final rule is published, the, the effective date is delayed by five years. This is planned to give all stakeholders enough time to map out and implement system upgrades and roll out schedules to allow for the new 12-digit NDC format. On the effective date, the 12-digit NDC is the new standard. That starts the transition period, which lasts for three years. At the end of the transition period, 10-digit NDCs will be completely phased out. As previously mentioned, the proposed rule was published on July 25, 2022, with a 120 day comment period, which will end on November, 20, uh, on November 22, 2022. If finalized, the final rule will provide an exact date on which the rule will be effective, which will be five years after publication of the final rule. The period following the effective date is called the transition period. This period is intended to provide enough time for compliance with all drug listing and labeling requirements. We are hoping that with correct planning, this period can assist companies to avoid relabeling costs and avoid any drug shortage situations. At the same time, this transition period was proposed to be three years to limit the time frame through which both 10 and 12 digit NDC NTCs will coexist. If finalized on the effective date, FDA will internally switch all existing NDCs to the new 12 digit format by adding leading zeros to the short segments. On the effective date, even if there are five-digit labeler codes left, FDA will stop assigning five-digit labeler codes and move to six-digit labeler codes. The new six-digit codes will obviously start in the 100,000 range, so there will be no six-digit labeler code starting with a leading zero. All stakeholders, including private sector and government entities, should start preparing their systems and operations to comply with the new NDC format. On the effective date, all systems should be capable of handling the new uniform 12-digit NDC. Stakeholders that are engaged and are responsible for drug labeling should plan labeling updates and printing accordingly. On the effective date, all drug listing submissions will be accepted only in the new 12-digit format. The transition period is proposed to be three years, and it starts after the effective date of the final rule. During the transition period, we will publish and maintain both 10 and 12-digit NDC formats. We don't intend to object if drugs that were assigned a 10-digit NDC prior to the effective date continue to be labeled with the 10-digit NDC, but we expect that the labeling update to the 12-digit NDC happens and is completed during the transition period. 
That's why planning those updates ahead of time is very important. While FDA switches existing NECs to the 12 digit format internally and publishes both formats during this period, registrants with existing 10 digit NDCs prior to the effective date that are now required to submit drug listing to FDA uh, during the transition period should confirm the new 12 digit NDC in any of the updates or drug listing certification they are required to submit during this three year transition period. During the transition period, while systems should all be capable of handling the 12 digit NDC format, we will have drug labeling with both 10 and 12 digit NDCs, either 10 or 12 digit NDCs in the marketplace. We encourage you to include the 12 digit NDCs on your drug labeling as soon as possible after the effective date and during the transition period, but not later than when you run out of your existing inventory. Under the proposed rule, if finalized, all active listing files with FDA are switched and confirmed to be 12 digits in a 642 format at the end of the transition period. At the end of the transition period, FDA will no longer exercise enforcement discretion for labeling. Any labeling introduced or offered for introduction into interstate commerce must now include the 12 digit format. At the end, I'd like to encourage you to submit your comments by the end of comment period, November 22, 2022, through the docket. A link here is provided on the slide, and you are able to also find, find it by searching under FDA's NDC proposed rule. In addition to electronic submission, you can also write and mail us a copy of your comment to the FDA address, which is provided in the proposed rule. I have also included the link to the proposed rule that is published in the Federal Register and described in details. Thank you for your time and attention. We look forward to hearing from you, working and engaging with you all in finding and implementing the most effective path forward. Thank you for the great presentation. On behalf of Cedar Small Business and Industry Assistance, we hope you enjoyed today's presentation and found it helpful. We look forward to your presence at future webinars, which will be advertised on our website at fda.gov forward slash Cedar SBIA. This concludes today's webinar.